Hey guys, so today I have swatches of the OPI Xbox collection for spring 2022. There are 12 polishes here altogether. I found these on polishpick.com. So there are some exclusive skins with Forza and Halo. Um, there's a lot of detail about that, so I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. The official launch date is February 1st, so I'm not sure if those will be redeemable before then or not. So 12 polishes altogether, and I will get into the swatches. So the first polish is called The Pass Is Always Greener, and this is this really light yellowy green pastel. This one was pretty streaky for me. It definitely was a lot streakier after it was fully dry than it was when it was wet. I did end up needing three coats for it to cover completely, and even then I feel like I could still see some streaks, so I wasn't 100% satisfied with the coverage on this one even after that third coat. It really wasn't bad, it was still totally wearable, but for someone like me who's really picky about streaks, it did bother me that I was three coats in and it still was not 100% fully covered. I also feel like I got a bit of a better color with that third coat in addition to covering up the streaks that I had. So that is three coats of The Pass Is Always Greener. The next polish is called Achievement Unlocked and this is this really nice lilac cream. After using the last polish, I actually was not expecting this one to perform as well as it did. It was really surprisingly opaque for such a light color, and the formula was really, really good. I still had a few streaks after that first coat, but I was really surprised at the coverage. It was fully opaque in two coats, again, for such a light color that's so nice to see, and it did also dry a little bit darker than it applied. So that is two coats of Achievement Unlocked. The next polish is called Sage Simulation, and this is this light, dusty blue with a really fine green shimmer. This one was a little bit more sheer than I was expecting. Looking at it in the bottle, I was thinking it was going to be creamier than it was. I did get full coverage in two coats, but it was a really careful two coats. I could very easily see you needing three, just depending on your application and really good shimmer in this as well. A little bit of brush strokiness going on once it was fully dry, but for the most part, those brush strokes did melt into the polish really, really nicely. So that is two coats of Sage Simulation. And of course I had to add matte top coat to this one as well because I can't control myself. The next polish is called Can't Control Me, and this is a light periwinkle-ish blue shade with a really fine shimmer. I also apologize for the cotton ball fuzz. This is not the last time that that's gonna happen in this video. So this had that nice creamy finish that I was actually expecting Sage Simulation to have. The shimmer in here came off a little bit bigger, like the particles seemed a little bit bigger. I did end up needing two coats for full opacity with this one, but this was another one that I could see you needing three. It was a very careful two coats. I had really no brush strokes through this at all. I think that's because the shimmer was a little bit larger than in the previous polish. And also that creamier finish is gonna hide those brush strokes a bit better as well. So that is two coats of Can't Control Me. And of course I did have to add matte top coat to this as well. And I really like how this turned out with the matte top coat. It changed the look of the shimmer completely. The next polish is called Racing for Pinks. And this is a really nice, pink cream. I feel like it's kind of straddling the line between a brighter pink and a pastel. This one was a bit sheer. It definitely had some streaks. I had to add a third coat to this one. Those streaks were definitely more apparent after the polish was fully dry. And even after that third coat, I feel like I could still see them a bit. It was not opaque to my satisfaction, I guess, after that third coat, so I wasn't super thrilled about that. I do really like this color, and I wish that it had performed a little bit better. It was definitely not the worst thing in the world, and it was still wearable, but it did bother me a bit. And this is another one that seemed actually considerably darker once it was fully dry than when it's wet or the color that you see in the bottle. So that is three coats of Racing for Pinks. The next polish is called Quest for Quartz, and this is this nice taupey cream shade with a really fine silver flake. So this was a nice creamy finish on the first coat. Those flakes did stand out pretty well for how opaque the base was. Now these are little silver flakes. They're not like a glitter, so they don't dry textured, and they're not super difficult to remove off of the nail, but they will stick to the skin around your nail because those flakes are really light and they just tend to get everywhere. 
This was a nice solid two coat polish for me and I was really happy that it had the perfect balance between being really opaque but also still being able to pick out those silver flakes that are in there. A lot of times a really opaque polish you'll lose the flakes but they were very apparent in this one. So that is two coats of Quest for Quartz. And of course I had to see how this one looked with matte top coat as well and I honestly think it looked terrible with matte top coat which doesn't happen really often so I was surprised by that. The next polish is called Trading Paint and this is this peach cream shade. This is another lighter cream shade that really let me down. I really did not love the coverage on these. It was a bit streaky on that first coat. It actually looks a lot better on camera than it looked to me in person. It definitely dried streakier than it was when it was wet. And even after that third coat was on, I still feel like there were too many flaws in this for me to be comfortable with it. So not loving the coverage on this one, unfortunately. And this also dried a little bit darker than it was when it was wet. So that is three coats of Trading Paint. The next polish is called Susie is My Avatar, and this is a kind of salmon cream shade. This one definitely came off a little bit more like a crelly to me than a true cream. It had that slightly squishy, slightly sheer look to it. It definitely still had some streaks as well, so I did end up doing three coats for this one. While three coats covered the nail line completely that I had, I did still have some streaks after that third coat. It's very similar to the other creams in the collection, just a little bit too flawed for me after three coats to be fully comfortable with it. Some were worse than others. This one was definitely not the worst, but there were still some flaws there after that third coat. And this was another one that dries a shade or two darker than it is when it's wet. So that is three coats of Susie is my avatar. The next polish is called Pixel Dust, and this is a lighter pink jelly with these big giant silver flakes. The flakes in here actually don't look fully silver to me. They almost look more like a pearly white shade, and there are a ton of flakies in here. So even though the jelly base that this is in is fairly sheer, you still do get a decent amount of coverage just from the flakes alone. Flakies will lay flat. They won't be gritty or textured like a glitter would be. These flakies will probably get everywhere when you remove this polish though, because they are really light, so they're gonna stick to the skin around your nails. And I had full coverage with this polish in two coats, which is really surprising, again, because of how light that jelly base is, but the flakies built up really well. So that is two coats of pixel dust. And of course, I had to add matte top coat to this one as well, which I actually, you can see a difference, but I don't feel like it changed as much as I was expecting it to. The next polish is called You Had Me at Halo, and this is a another kind of periwinkle shade, but like a darker periwinkle with a really strong shimmer. This one has a lot of surprisingly good sparkle that you really can't see in the bottle, but it comes out on the nail. It might even have a few holographic sparkles in there, but it is hard to tell because they're so fine, but that would also make sense if they're using Halo as a play on Hollow in addition to the pun for the Halo game. This built up pretty well, but I did still need three coats to fully cover my nail line. I didn't have any brush strokes or any issues with the shimmer at all once it was fully dry. I could see you getting away with two coats with this one, just depending on your application, but I do still also think you get a better color out of three, so I think it would end up being a solid three-coater for me either way. So that is three coats of You Had Me at Halo. And of course I had to add matte top coat to this one as well, which actually brought out a really nice blue green sparkle that was pretty hard to see without it. The next polish is called Heart and Console, and this is this bright shimmery red. This isn't a jelly base, but I actually had pretty good coverage from all of that sparkle and shimmer that's in there. I did end up needing three coats total just to cover up my nail line, and I think that third coat is worth it because you do get a much better color out of the whole situation once you have that third coat on there. And I think that's pretty common with these red jellies to really need to build up layers of them to get the best, brightest color. With this one, I actually think the shimmer looks better after three coats as well. So that is three coats of Heart and Console. And of course, also with matte top coat, the shimmer actually did not photograph well with this one, especially when it was matte, but it did look pretty cool in person. And the last polish is called Noob Berry, and this is just a nice medium warm purple cream. This was a pretty standard cream polish. It performed really well, a little bit uneven and a little bit patchy on that first coat, as well as just not opaque enough, but that's fairly normal. Once that second coat got on there, everything was built up to the color that's in the bottle, fully covered, any patches or streaks that were in there, just a really nice cream polish. No complaints with this one at all. So that is two coats of Noob Berry. 
Okay, so I have an honorable mention at the uniqueness of Pixel Dust. I have no problems with this polish. I just, it's like, when I look at this and look at the other colors, it's not my favorite, but I do appreciate that OPI did something very different with this one. And I have two favorites. So Racing for Pinks is a really, really great shade of pink. I did not love the formula. It wasn't the worst formula ever. It wasn't my favorite, but I do really like the color. Overall, I was kind of not super impressed with the majority of the creams in this collection. I think they were all a little too streaky for me. Granted, I'm very, very picky, so I feel like the average person is going to be able to get that polish, put two or three coats on, and probably be fine, but I am like a little over the top picky when it comes to streakiness, so for me, I wasn't in love with them. I know that it's possible to have made them better because I have a lot of creams in those same shades that do perform better, so that's just me being picky. However, my absolute favorite here is Achievement Unlocked because this cream actually performed really well. It's a nice, I don't know why I have my hand behind my back for like that entire speech. But this is a really nice lilac cream. It is nicely opaque, it builds up really well, really good formula. Um, aside from just really liking the color, this one was a standout as far as performance goes as well. I'm not sure if that speaks more to this being a really good polish or if it speaks more to the other creams not being so great, but regardless, Achievement Unlocked was my favorite. And if you're okay with a little bit of less than perfect coverage, then Raising for Pinks is a really good pink shade as well. So according to the OPI website, um, so if you want a Forza Horizon 5 skin, which is actually a uh, really cool looking, it's like a pink to orange gradient, um, you have to buy the collection from Ulta. So it says that you purchase $20 worth of OPI Xbox collection products from Ulta between December 26th and March 31st in one transaction, US only, and that you can only get the Forza Horizon 5 skin, or this says in-game content, but I think it's just a skin, if you buy from Ulta. So you're supposed to take a picture of the receipt with your phone, visit opi.com slash xbox, upload the receipt, and receive an automatic confirmation and request to complete a registration form, and then you get an offer code for Xbox. So yeah, I was said this in the intro, but I hadn't actually found this page yet. So it says that that will be available, the skin will be available starting February 1st, which is the official launch date of the collection. So for the Halo skin or armor, however people that play Halo refer to it, you need to pretty much do the same thing, but the purchase needs to be made from Amazon. Um, the offer code is a little bit different. I will link this page from the OPI website in the description box because it's a link kind of a little complicated to get these skins if you're really interested in them, but I do think it's a cool way to not just take the Xbox brand and slap it onto some random pastels. It's a cool way to kind of integrate the collaboration. I would also um, do really bad things for one of these Xbox controllers, and I don't even play the Xbox that much because I'm more of a PlayStation person, but I would really, really love one of those Xbox controllers that they're giving away in the shades. I don't know how many shades they're doing them in, but they're giving away Xbox controllers in the shades from the collection. Um, I think OPI is doing it on their Instagram. Really, really want one of those. Would totally buy one of those if I could. But anyway, I'll have all that information linked down below um, because it is a lot of information if you're really interested in getting that stuff. So initially, I was really excited about an Xbox collaboration, but I was totally picturing like darker, more fall colors. And then when the pictures came out and it was the spring collection, because I didn't think it was going to be the spring collection. I thought it would be something separate. Um, I was actually like, what the heck, this doesn't make any sense, but I really like the integration of the skins and the controllers and kind of making everything make sense as a spring collection. Um, otherwise, I think it would be totally off, but I actually like it. I like it more than I thought I was going to when the promos first came out. I should say I like it as an idea and I like the spread of colors. Again, wasn't super impressed with some of the creams, but overall it's better than I thought it was going to be. So that is the OPI Xbox collection for spring 2022. Again, I got those from Polish Pick, but if you want any of the skins, it's going to have to come from Ulta or Amazon for you, depending on what you're after. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Cats wrestling outside the door. Do you mind? Okay, continuing with what I was saying.